All right, Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. We are off to get the new, for us, Porsche 911. And, well, we're road tripping this for Bronco. It's going to get about five hours of driving in today. And let's cover quickly the really strong, great love points with this Ford Bronco, as well as, well, the clear defects or low points of the vehicle, what some people would call the hate category. First of all, you can hear the first one. We've got the roof. Don't buy a Bronco expecting to have a silent ride. It's a vehicle made to listen to music in, uh, because if you expect it to be dead silent, you're not going to be getting it. You're going to be getting this wind noise right now. We're doing 119 kilometers an hour, which is about 74 miles per hour unbelievably comfortable seats made for just about every size we're driving the wild track on 35 inch tires and yes that means this is much higher and the tires are way bigger than if you had let's say a big bend on those 31 inch tires they're even considerably bigger than the i believe it's 33.6 or 33.8 we don't call them 34 inch tires on the badlands we call them 30 uh, 33s this Ford Bronco Wild Track, whatever Bronco you're looking at, does have some really strong points. It's got fantastic seating. A bit of a weak point when you're doing a road trip, though, is we have the Wild Track. It's one of the highest trims. The only way you can spend more, really, is if you Sasquatch or Badlands, or if you go ahead and, sorry, I just need to switch lanes here, or you go ahead and get a Raptor. And still, the navigation, kind of a weak point, the navigation has run out. Oh well, so I'll use Waze and I'll get better information. But right now, we've been driving for an hour and surprisingly, fuel economy isn't that much of a weak point for a vehicle that's on huge tires. So the wild track here, or any Sasquatch model on 35 inch tires, we've driven for an hour and 10 minutes and have used one eighth of a tank. So that's really not that bad. We're running right now at highway speeds. Of course, this is a, a pig in the wind, so it's not very aerodynamic, but we're still getting about 14.5 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway, which oddly enough is about the same we get in the city. So normally, vehicles get much better fuel economy on the highway, but not when you're, well, this is less aerodynamic than a freaking cow. So if you like this kind of information, please, before we continue, Hit the like button, subscribe, share the content with people that you need to know this information or that could find this interesting. And what's more, we should also take note that if we had the big bend, the big bends on 31 inch tires, we'd be getting about 12 liters per 100 kilometers. And if we were running the four cylinder engine, the 2.3 liter, that would get down into the 11 liters per 100 kilometers. So uh, yes, there's definite ways to have this vehicle be about 30% more fuel efficient. And having a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine isn't one of them. Now the engine, the 2.7 liter is a huge plus. It's an incredible V6. It's a lot of fun. It's unbelievably torquey. In the 400, in the four, roughly 400 pound feet of torque, 400, 415 pound feet of torque, it is a blast to drive, but the, the 2.3 liter is no slouch, folks. A lot of fun. So stay tuned because we're gonna be showing you the, the, the Porsche 911 that we're going off to get that is worth the five hours of driving. I gotta get back in the ways because of course Ford's navigation is now dead to us. We'd have to pay a monthly and I'm against monthly subscriptions, so that is definitely a point of annoyance. But with my pa in the vehicle here, he asked a lot of great questions and reminded me of some of the great points on the Ford Bronco. He got those, he loves the view, vision on this. He finds it's actually better than an F-150 because we sit up high, the hood goes down a, a, just enough that we see really well in front of us. You got the front anchor points that you can put limb razors on. But those plastic points in the front are great for guiding the vehicle. This has better easier to turn, easier to park, and on the highway this thing is very stable. While it might be noisy, it is very, very stable and is a total blast of road trip. Remember folks, uh, you can catch our videos. We've driven this for 20, almost 24 hours straight, leaving from the great north 
in Canada and going all the way down to Florida. So you can catch those videos. Uh, Marie and I had a wonderful time, no back pain. These are the most comfortable seats that we've had in a vehicle. So in a way, the Bronco is uh, very luxurious, you could say. So folks, we're gonna get back into getting the directions and showing you the content. Um, of course, plastic dash we got up here. My boss checking that out. I, I, I'm, I'm knowing he's not enjoying this plastic dash. Uh, I've got a strong feeling he likes leather covered dashes, but the 2024 Ford Bronco Badlands, and we've got one at the dealership, hard top, it's not Sasquatch, and it's not completely decked out with all the equipment. It's, it's pretty base, and it's got a stitch dash. So that would be more to his liking. I'll have to get you all photos to that over on. All right, so here we have a 2024 Ford Bronco Badlands, and I've got something pretty surprising right here. And that's that. This is, of course, the leather vinyl package at about $2,000. But look at this dash. You've got the stitch dash and either real leather or imitation leather, but it looks absolutely fantastic. Padding on the doors is the same. Seems a little less from recollection than what I had on my 21, but it's really nice padding right here. Badland still has that fantastic black and orange stitching highlights for the grab handles. But look at the dash here. I find that pretty impressive. That is a really nice change. I feel Ford's listening to consumer demand, seeing that the interior was a little too plasticky, and this really helps, helps spruce things up. Looks a lot less plasticky with that dash, and of course the steering wheel. Leather steering wheel really helps as well. It's a Badlands, you got carpeted flooring. So I just wanted to show that to you all because I think that's a really nice change up. And of course the orange stitching in the seats really goes well with that orange stitching in the dash. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is an improvement? Do you think it's not necessary for an off-road vehicle? Let us know what you think of the Ford Bronco. We're on Instagram, so check out our Facebook, Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Check out our Instagram. I'll throw up some Bronco photos because the Badlands non-Sasquatch is probably, uh, if you're looking for something that looks high-end, that has a lot of capability, it's got great look and comfort, that's going to be your model if you, because the, the, the stitch dash really does change the look of it and the black and orange is great. I finally have gotten used to this blue, gray, black mix. Uh, I'm not hating it anymore. Uh, it's actually grown on me. It's nice. Sometimes it's nice to not just have all black interiors, but we've got the big Mustang fan here. Two Mustangs, two uh, Mercury's. And uh, I believe he just sold his two Crown Victorias. So he, his, his car fleet is coming down a little bit. Uh, now your Mercury's, remind me, which, which model of Mercury do you have? The Grand Marquis. The Grand Marquis, and you love that because of comfort, right? Yeah. How are you finding this for comfort? Good, great. Well, that's, that, that's, that, that means a lot coming from this guy who's been all about comfort for heck, uh, had a lot of vehicles. You've had 70s Camaros, you've had Trans Ams, a uh, heck of a lot of vehicles. So before I miss my exit, I've got to jump back in the ways, folks. Just went over a very, very bumpy bridge. Uh, Quebec roads are awful. We pay a ton of taxes. I'm not sure where it's going, but it's definitely not going to the roads. But stay tuned, folks. You're going to like what you're about to see.